the foosball tournaments for six hours a day and don't really get any work done. <laughs> and that that, and that it, snack bar <laughs> is full it every is. day Especially of foosball when there's players. A soccer game on in there too. Oh, it's just soccer! Packed. Do you remember? Do you remember? Well, you guys were gone, but. Uh, you weren't here either. World Cup. I've oh. never seen more people in Earls than that first That's what Jeff Brazil said. game. Wow. Jeff said that there was it was standing room only and people couldn't get food. <laughs> it was. It was like you were like weaving through people. I'd be highly upset. Like, excuse me. All right, let's let's start. This is the Bullpen Podcast. Welcome inside the Bullpen. Dan Harris here with Justin Perry. Whoa, government name. Yeah, Whoa. Evan Doherty. Evan Doherty is here. We'll Brandon Velasky, we'll gentlemen. Hydration later. check, hydration check. Brandon, what you got in your cup over there? Let's uh, well, edit I don't that have out. I in my cup because I'm saving that for the actual beer fest, you know, that's going on afterwards. But I've got a, I've got a silver bullet in honor of uh, the noise. Ito, how you staying alive right now? Uh, I've got a, I'm staying alive with coffee. He um, would bring coffee latte. to the first one, right? He probably waited in line for like five minutes. I'm too, going at the, full strength on this. Triple? Triple latte? Uh, double. JP, you got the Hennessy? Nah, this is uh, Percy Miracles has water. Oh, very good, very good. High quality H2O. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's take a look at the top stories, guys. Evan, fill us in on this uh, fan duel um, DraftKings problem that we uh, we had this week. Yeah, if you want to sum it up, basically, um, DraftKings employee makes about three hundred fifty grand playing fan duel using information you got working at DraftKings. Very nice. Yeah, yeah cha-ching. Must be nice. You can go cha ching three hundred fifty thousand an times over. <laughs> we don't have an actual audio person. No, no. Drop in sound effects, and, and that's what happened. Uh, so obviously now this, you know, for the millions and millions of advertisements you see about DraftKings and FanDuel, this has now led to basically both, actually already a class action lawsuit being placed against both companies. Now, uh, what do you guys think this means for the future of daily fantasy? I'm just waiting for Martha Stewart to chime in on this inside trade. Yeah, deal. absolutely. <laughs> she's probably she's probably behind the guy at DraftKings. Oh, she's, she's probably she's just got her raking it in. She's good at this stuff. She's she'll be in the next FanDuel commercial. Here's the problem: it will take place twice during every commercial <laughs> of Dude, every NFL game. Dude, they have like hour long infomercials I know, now. I know those are ridiculous and mildly entertaining. I know it's illegal what they did, but you know, I mean, it's I, just the it's just an edge that I think there's a little bit of an edge, but I don't think what they did. And, and, and again, we don't know all the facts about specifically what he gave out, but I don't think it's that. Well, the information had to do with uh, the percentages that certain players are being chosen by users, and therefore, I, I was explaining to someone with this yeah, example. No. Let's say you take Aaron Rodgers every week, mm-hmm. and and 50% of the field takes Aaron Rodgers, and he gets 15 points. Well, if you're one of the 10% that picks Tyrod Taylor, and he gets 20 points, and assuming user A and user B both have... The exact same roster the rest of the way. The person took Tyra Taylor as the advantage. I, I get that. Right. But ultimately, it still comes down to what the players do on the field. You still like you, I, I get that you're you're weighing it a little bit more in percentage, but like if you're one of those people that takes if you're that percentage that takes Tyrod Taylor and he throws up a dud, and, but you're on the other side of it and you you have Aaron Rodgers and you're in that vast majority and he drops thirty points in fantasy, yeah. guess what? You're probably going to make that money. So it, yeah, it the really, problem <clears throat> the problem me, I not, see is that now you know you, we've all played daily fantasy yeah. and now uh, I have the regular. Oh, thanks, JP. Yeah. <laughs> the The problem is that we've all played Daily Fantasy. Some of us enjoy it more than others, but now we've got there's going to be all kinds of regulation, and they're right. going to be out there, you know. Well, I think that's the, trying to that's figure the out the biggest problem. Is, so now, is that who knows they, what's the future? They of the look game. like they were. There's an issue now, and it looks like there was, you know, insider trading or whatever you want to call yeah. it. And so now there's there's a stigma placed on them that all of these contests, whenever you enter them, you know, there's that you assume it's going to be rigged in some way, shape, or form. Well, now, and what was that thing we were we were looking at? It was from, uh, I don't remember what site it was on. It was like Bleacher Report or one of those things. Remember, we were watching that video, and it said something like that if you're playing, you're probably losing. There's a good percentage of the. It, it basically made the point that you have to be entering more than 300 entries a day right. Right. to finish in the top percentage of money. And and because it's you know and it's, we've heard stories about the, these guys who use these algorithms and enter uh, three hundred contests a day and then come out with five figures at the end of the night and yeah. that's what happens and so I mean when you en- have all these contests that have multiple entries and you can just basically hijack them right. mm-hmm. uh, that helps your odds obviously I mean I'm putting in like you know two or three dollars a day when I do them so <laughs> I don't expect to win a ton of money when I do so I know what I'm getting into. Uh, uh, you know, from the get go. So the fact of the matter is, we're all going to be asking for our money back at some mm-hmm. point. All right. <laughs> other, other class action. Other Count inter- me in. Interesting story this week. Uh, Yankees ace CC Sabathia is uh, 
Drunk. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Terrible. <laughs> His favorite adjective. <laughs> at, at a terrible time, as the Yankees were getting ready for the wild card, CC comes out and says, I'm missing the postseason. I'm going into, into rehab. He only missed one game. As the Yankees the lost Rihanna the wild song. card. Uh, <laughs> it was Amy Winehouse. Uh, no, no, she had a song where she talked about rehab, didn't she? Okay. Uh, well, there's a song Rehab. Like, yeah, that's, no, that's, I know, I know, I know that one. I know that one. <laughs> that's what I was talking but, about. But yeah, the, I, I'll find it. All right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is, he wasn't gonna he wasn't going to start that game. Right, no. So what, it, it was Tanaka the whole time. Right. So the potential for him playing in that game, I guess, it really didn't affect the Yankees' chances per se. But like, if they hadn't won, then there would have been an issue there. No, Houston, I, I think was going to win that game regardless of whether CC started or not. But um, your your point is that basically you don't think it really affected the Yankees at all. Yeah. I, I don't think it affected the Yankees. Not in that game. No. Well, actually, the other you thing from that game. You know what affected him in that and, game? Dallas Keuchel. Yeah, yeah that was it. The other thing about that game, and we were looking at this, is the fans that couldn't get in at the bottom of the first inning. We were looking at that picture, and they were like 10 deep trying to get through security. I'd be pretty pissed if I'd pay tickets for that. Nobody's really worried about the Yankees as it is. So <laughs> yeah, the prayers uh, to CC were getting clean. The Yankees not going to the right. postseason is beautiful. So not yeah. worried about the Yankees. What about the Cubs? The Cubs win. So Brandon and I were debating before that game. We're taping this on Thursday, totally the day wrong. after. And I said, I think Gary is going to shut him down. You're like, no, well, he's got to come down at some point. Okay, and I and he didn't come down yesterday, and he didn't come down in that game. And uh, and I'll be the first to admit, the dude is, <laughs> is just pitching lights out right now. But if you're a pessimist like I am, I'm not a Cubs fan. But if I was a Cubs fan, I'd be scared. You know what? Just because. The you Cardinals know how to win in the postseason. Well, that and you—you you also like if you don't win with Arietta, if you don't win a game with you know, if you don't win that game with Arietta, you're screwed. Like because I know well, yeah, Lester's had a good done. season, Kendricks had a good season, but like they're not that lights out kind of guy. And now you've got to play the Cardinals. If you can get past the Cardinals, though, if they can somehow get past the Cardinals, they got a great shot. Well, they can against either the Mets or the Dodgers. They can bum gardener it and just oh, yeah. have him pitch like crazy. Yeah. They're going to have to. How old he's is going he? to have to. He's 29, I think. Okay. So he could probably still handle it. Mm-hmm. Well, the Cubs win. We'll see what happens. Uh, did you see there was a guy uh, in uh, Pittsburgh dressed up as Bartman taking pictures with people? He brought. He wore the hat That's great. and the headphones. And, and, and <laughs> people will, will not forget. I had a discussion with somebody yesterday about, about Bartman, and it ultimately it came down to the Cubs had a 4 nothing lead in that game. Oh, they totally blew like, it. You but. can't blame it on Steve Bartman. Like, just they have to let it. That that's Cubs fans though. They love to have those built-in excuses. Whether it's the black cat, the goat, Bartman, it has nothing to do with. No, no, your team just they collapsed. Thirty for thirty had his back. Yeah, it's been a hundred years. Yeah. Well, I, 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 it's I been a hundred years, I, I get man. That, a century. But just, just accept it. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's the first step to recovery. All right, we'll see how the Cubs do. You know, no, I'm rooting for them. I, am. I think they're, they're going to be the uh, you know the fan favorite, just people that are yeah jumping jumping into the postseason. Um, all right, well let's uh, let's peep the ranks for this week, JP. Your 40s main man. Let's talk about that Fab Four. It's a little ridiculous. Yeah, man. I think Pat Forty was a little liquored up, <laughs> <laughs> throwing Northwestern into the college football playoff this early. Also, the Florida Gators. No, there's no chance that the Florida Gators and McElwain make it. <laughs> to the college football playoff. This is not going to happen. Explain. Yeah. Uh, they really don't have a quarterback. That young man overachieved and played over his potential. He had a high school-esque game. Uh, he did that coming off mono. Yeah. He was making out with too many chicks at the frat parties. Because <laughs> that's how they do it in Gatorland. And with, excuse me, what they call the swamp. For a good reason. <laughs> I was going to say, is that why they call it the swamp? <laughs> Besides Junior Hargraves, they don't have a solid secondary. They they will not go anywhere. I, I want somebody to name five players on Northwestern off the top of their head and why they should be in the college football playoff. I can name their coach. That's really it. You not not gonna, the starting quarterback, not the running back, not a defender. You're getting an offer. Over yeah. here. That's it. Yeah. No, I don't think we can name one. No. <laughs> and yeah. I'm sure that the esteemed Patrick Forty would not but, be able to name that, five either. But that brings up a good point. Like, what is your, your four? Yeah. Like, and and that's been the debate all season long. Nobody really looks like a clear cut number one. I'm sure Bam will be there if they went out. I mean, they lost, yeah. but I'm sure yeah. they'll be well, there. Well, because they lose to Ole Miss and then Ole Miss tanks. Yeah, like nobody wants to really grab a hold of that number one spot, and that that's why I think this kind of this season in college football has been really interesting. All right. Well, you got to throw. All right. You really want to go out and throw four out right now? Yeah. Sure. I think I think you 
I think Ohio State will get through. They're yeah. playing like crap right now. They don't care about anything, but they're still 5-0. and I, They'll eventually – it'll kick in. You know, they'll kick in. Because they've got Michigan State coming up, and, and when once they get past that game, they'll be like, okay, we should probably – and Michigan, I was gonna say when they get to because that that game's you know at Michigan that that'll be a fun one if they're both still, still highly yeah. ranked. I mean, Michigan's got Michigan State even in, right. in a week and a half, so right. that's coming first. Well, Michigan has Northwestern, but we'll get that to that later. Yeah, we'll <laughs> yeah. get, we'll that's get that called the tease. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's a smooth tease. All right, uh, what else you got? Uh, yeah, Ohio State's got to go Michigan State and then Michigan. I mean, that's yeah. how they end up the year. That's that's going to be tough, but I think I think they get through that personally. Uh, you got to look, I think, at Baylor. Yeah. They still got that offense. They're going to score 40, 45 points every single week. Now, do you have Baylor and TCU, or no. are you just picking one no. Big 12? There's no way, way okay. in hell two As Big you 12 should. teams make it. As you should. No. Uh, you got to get an SEC team in there. And I think. Mm-mm. You don't think so? You think, who's they gonna, who are they going to lose to? Uh, LSU is going to be the surprise team. Yeah. With I, I like that. Ooh. I like that. They play defense. Defense wins championships. And, and they also have the greatest football player on the planet say. Earth currently in the, the silverback gorilla known uh, as Leonard Fournier. Fournette. <laughs> Did you just come up with that nickname? Fournier. Silver, silverback silver gorilla. gorilla. Leonard Fournette. I mean, that's what he Copyright runs like. That's a really long nickname. Yeah. And the there goes the greatest football player ever known as the silverback gorilla <laughs> known as Leonard Fournette. And there he goes, the AKA. silverback gorilla. Le- <laughs> yeah, it's a long way to go. Because you're called a horse race. <laughs> Uh, TCU <laughs> loses down the stretch that come. <laughs> TCU loses to Baylor it's a the race. last game of the season to okay. not get in. Okay. Right. Because Boykin so, doesn't throw so the ball to Dotson. Okay, JP's gonna take LSU. We got Ohio State in there. We got Baylor who has, who's our final who's our final guy? Well Utah loses to what? either Is Arizona State or USC in two yeah, weeks. Well, I th- it will be SC. They have the they have the easiest the route to get to the game. I mean, Stanford the, keeps winning. Here's the next three for Utah. Utah's got Cal, Arizona State at USC. The next three That's weeks, tough. they lose one of those three games. Yeah, maybe two. Yeah. But what's USC got left? So I mean, they, well, they've already seven, lost. They're the seventeenth right now, man. They're far enough back already. I don't think. I don't think they make a big enough move up. They well, they do get in. to play Notre Dame. So still. once they beat Notre Dame, once they beat ranked Utah, once they beat ranked Cal, they don't have anybody until UCLA at the end of the season because they're going to beat Oregon at Oregon. Full disclosure. Justin Perry is a big USC fan. Yeah, you know. well, it's not like we don't have any other Pac-12 yeah. fans here. Fight well, on. Fight but on. But we actually, Evan and I actually went to a Pac-12 school. <laughs> we attended I'm class. Not we didn't just audit them like JP. Yeah. Yeah. I audited, amongst other things, at that <laughs> prestigious university. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's our, uh, what's our fourth, what's our fourth team? Pac-12. USC. It doesn't have to be Pac-12. It could be somebody else. No, nah, it's going to be USC. Forty is going to have to eat his words. I'll throw Stanford out there. Oh, man. All right. You heard it here first. Ito going out on a limb. All right. Just going to exit CBS, stage left now. CBS <laughs> Sports Power Rankings, NFL. They have the Denver Broncos at number four. Why am, why am I so confused by that? Why, why are you confused? Cool. They, they, don't, defense, they don't look. That defense is legit. The, yeah. the defense is good, but the offense looks terrible. Okay, the offense outside of the running game, or the running game looks terrible, but their passing game is still on point. Peyton, I mean, he can't. He doesn't have the arm speed. You know, he's not whipping it down the field, but he can still pick you apart, and he can still make plays. Like I watched the Vikings Broncos game this past weekend, and he just matriculated down the field, got him into field goal range, and they won the game. And then the defense took over because they knew the Vikings had to pass, and you know they won their first two games based on that defense. That defense is going to carry him a long way if they don't suffer any injuries, like Von Miller, where all those guys stay healthy. That secondary, like. They're going to be just fine. You've got six undefeateds right now. Okay, if you have the Broncos at four and zero, Bengals four and zero, right? Patriots three and zero, Packers four and zero, Panthers four and zero, Falcons four and zero. I think the Broncos are better than, than the Panthers and the Falcons. Correct. So that puts them. At and four. I think I think they're better than the Bengals too. So I at least put them at three. I'd say Packers, Patriots ahead of them. Okay. I, I say super. That Bowl. didn't take hard. No, know, that was yeah, it. Yeah, all yeah, I needed was like, hard at all. I don't. I just. Dan, I don't. Just be, I don't. For some reason, I don't believe in this team it, as being a an, like a Super Bowl team again. So that's why I think with the, we're in the top four all, through five weeks. Peyton Manning. Yeah, they have Peyton Manning. You put Peyton Manning on the Jacksonville Jaguars, and they're probably a fringe playoff team. Actually, their receivers are pretty good. So. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't Their know. offensive line is. That's just my thought. I, I just saw it and I thought, well, that's kind of. I'm surprised that they're that high. To your point, six fewest yards offensively. I mean, Denver. Yeah, to 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 leave and they're, Tony Harris Jr. They're only giving up, up any 100, catches. They're only giving up 180 
in the air per week. And that pass rush is disgusting. Well, I own their yeah. I own their defense in two leagues, so I'm happy there. I'm not real worried about it. But nice, just, nice fantasy segue. Yeah, that's or, good. <laughs> Just think of them as the uh, the Ravens, like when Ray Lewis asked Trent right. Dilfer to spot me 17 points right. and I'll win you the football game. Mm-hmm. Like Peyton can except, put, except Peyton Manning. He's a lot better than Trent <laughs> Dilfer, and he's not as drunk as Trent Dilfer is on air also. But I'm sure if Peyton can get three touchdowns a game, the Broncos will be fine. All right. Well, I'll, uh, I'll wait till they lose to the Raiders this week, and I'll have you all wow. eat crow. All right, uh, let's welcome into the studio um, our good friend Tom Brokaw, who's here to enlighten us with some uh, some some sports headlines from the week. Tom, welcome in. I don't know if I could do this. <laughs> <laughs> or you could have been Brian Williams because he's been everywhere. All right, so I was there. So the reference to Tom Brokaw is one of the running jokes we have is the old Saturday Night Live skit with Dana Carvey going, Gerald Ford the other day, the age of So we thought it'd be kind of funny if you were to read some sports headlines in the voice of Tom Brokaw, like, Landon Donovan says Jurgen Klinsmann should be fired if the U.S. <laughs> loses to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I told you, this was gold. This is comedic gold. Wow. Even if it's just to the three of us, even if nobody else is <laughs> listening to this and laughing, that was fantastic. There will be tears. There, no, there are Marty welling up. Yeah. Look, I don't know what you can do. Jake Arrieta shuts out the buckos and then drinks champagne. From a son's bottle. <laughs> <laughs> the delivery. It's on point. <laughs> wow, I wish there were the people second in coming. Here. <laughs> the second coming, Tom Brokaw. All right, one this more. This podcast <laughs> was filmed in front of a live studio on us. <laughs> of one. <laughs> of one. <laughs> of Vic's back there just like playing a video game. He's like, screw these guys. Shout out to our audio guy, Vic, who's oh, playing Angry Birds man. right now. Young Victorious. Oh. Young audio operator. Let's <laughs> die of <to> boredom. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy alright Tom <laughs> thanks Tom you got any more thanks. we'll, we'll, no. see, you, we'll let's, see you next I, week let's I, check in on the weather I don't know <laughs> I don't know why you guys find it that funny <laughs> it's just the way alright JP wait till you, wait till oh, you hear man. it back oh man <laughs> JP, I know there's some interesting things that happened this week. I know you have some feelings about Ronda Rousey hosting Sports Center. Ronda, care to opine? <laughs> I'm still thinking about Tom Brokaw. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to opine about Tom Brokaw? <laughs> I just want to know how Dana White continues to broker these deals for the most un- uninteresting people on the planet. Like, well, because right. it's not about them being interesting; it's, it's about promoting them being their fight. Phenomenal fighters. Yeah, she well, makes me. She made next- me want to turn the channel. But we had a conference call, so I wasn't actually paying attention. <laughs> but if it was just regular team lunch, she was on the whole. Turn, turn the channel. Well, she was on if, the whole hour. If you missed it, Ronda Rousey hosted Sports Center, and it was pretty like it, she wasn't reading highlights, and we didn't expect her to. Like that's not really her her forte. But it was a lot of just like it was a lot of fluff, a lot of unoriginality. Yeah. Well, and that's the only way you're gonna get anybody to watch it. Is it yeah. you got to provide a lot of fluff? Because really, who's gonna watch Sports Center? Because I oh, like I want to see Ronda Rousey do highlights. Zarniak put the Tim most... Kirkchen in an arm bar. That was the most awkward moment. Yeah, it was very awkward. But <laughs> you know, as one of our colleagues said, I, he couldn't turn away, and I really couldn't turn away either. It was very fascinating. Just I was to just watch. waiting I for just I turned away. away. I was just waiting for him to get creepy old man <laughs> on it. Yeah, <laughs> it kind of looked like his hands were like uh crazy he he is also by zarniak's words the most flexible human on the planet yeesh wait tim kirchin that's, yeah, that's, 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 that's what she that's said. what she kept repeating i think he pointed out during that <laughs> second he's like 58 or something like seriously he's, pretty, he's, pretty he's flexible because he's like five foot six yeah and his skin and bones are probably rubber by now and that's <laughs> why he's all, so flexible. All, all tendons he can fit in a trunk <laughs> <laughs> you not, just, not, that like went dark not like a trunk of a car, but like like oh, a little trunk yeah. that you like a Houdini trunk. Yeah, because exactly. yeah, that's Thank not you. dark either. Okay, <laughs> I'm not saying you put Tim Kirchin in a trunk. All right, I'm just saying he's flexible. Get him he's in there. Flexible <laughs> and he's tiny. Get him in your lineup. <laughs> it can happen. I'm right. feeling the cops are going to be called now. <laughs> all right, Ryan Tannehill. Anybody? Your Ryan, thoughts? Ryan Tannehill. <laughs> what is he thinking? Ryan Tannehill has to be one of the most sour bums on the planet Earth. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting mad because you got picked off in practice. And you're going to flaunt that you make a lot of money, but the practice squad guys are are embarrassing you. He should be worried about being on the practice squad after a couple of seasons, being as he's not able to no, get no, passes. No, no, that's, no. That's Robert Griffin the third is oh. being worried about being yeah. on the practice See, that, squad. That's, that's, a, that's a discussion for a different podcast, and that has nothing to do with this <laughs> <the> situation. <laughs> <laughs> defending the Redskins already. Yeah, we, no, I'm, but, I'm actually defending Robert. Yeah, defend Bob all you want. Uh, <laughs> Bobby. Well, Bobby. Uh, Ryan 
Chip came back and said he was not. He didn't make the the money comment. Claim that he said, you know, take your practice squad money and enjoy it. He, he said, take your practice squad trophy, whatever. You what believe, I, you believe him? What? Yeesh. No. Uh, <laughs> but what I find most pathetic about the situation is that Joe Philbin, former Miami Dolphins head coach, felt like he had to go to the practice squad players and say, hey, take it easy on him. We don't want to hurt his confidence. Well, what does that say Philbin about your quarterback? Canned. If you've got to tell practice squad yeah. players to take it easy, that's why he got canned because his practices were soft and he was soft on on his on his big money guys. He, you know, this team is completely and utterly, you know, play doh. Yeah, it's falling apart. I yeah. Mean, how many more guys they let go today? Dude, they fired their defensive coordinator. Yeah, coil. I mean, good luck in Miami, friends. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. And Tannehill, and was, thanks for being a, team, a good sport. This was a team that a lot of people predicted would make the playoffs, would challenge the Patriots for the East, you know, because they got in Dominican Sue. And you want to talk about soft? He's looked really soft. I'm sure he's probably tired from being double teamed and triple teamed sometimes. J.J. White does have the blessing of a defensive coordinator that moves him around into all four defensive line spots, and Sue is lining up a D tackle in the same spot every single play. So you always know where he's at. But, no, I I get that he needs to earn his paycheck, but that defense doesn't really help him as J.J. White can line up at end, tackle, the outside linebacker. Like, he's got a chance to – yeah, we're talking strictly defense. Like, he's got opportunities to make plays. Yeah, Dan. Whereas Ndamukong Sue is just, like, over the guard and center every single snap. Like, I always know where he's at. Like, I'm not scared. I know where the play is going. As opposed to Watt, like, he could be playing corner. He could be actually in the backfield taking the handoff from Yeah, him. so there's that, too. <laughs> On the other side. <laughs> hey, you, I got, you turn around and there's J.J. Watt. Uh, crap. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I got a side question to ask here. I'm going to totally take this conversation another way. So I'm looking at JP's shirt here. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And you've got like what looks to be a Grand Theft Auto thing going on here. Shout it's out like, 12 Bar. Kyle, LA. <laughs> Kyle looks Send me like, a gift it pack. Looks like, it looks like a Star Wars movie well, You kind of look like you got Rihanna kissing another girl. You yeah. got another dude to, uh, and is, a woman. Is that uh, um, the guns pointing at your face? Is that got, Billy D. Williams in the this, middle pointing exactly, at Exactly. This me? is an original 12 Bar Black Sopolitan movie tee. That I got at a concert. There's a chopper. Two thousand and six. There's a chopper dropping bombs on people. So twelve bar. If you want to send a box up to Yahoo for the sponsorship, how that be online? We can talk numbers. We're gonna shamelessly plug plenty of sponsors. Oh, I absolutely. Think. Just to try to get. I seen you guys a picture for the for the Twitter, so you can get that smooth retweet. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of that favorite action. <laughs> what if they send you some Kings tickets? You can do an LA Kings game. I'm, I'm down for the hockey. Well, speaking of that, let's yeah. uh, let's play a little round of uh, hockey trivia with JP, our <laughs> resident hockey analyst. So the theme here <laughs> is P- puck dizzle. Brandon is going to pose either a any show player's last name or a European city. <laughs> you have to tell us whether what Brandon tells you is a European city. or the last name of a NHL player on a current roster, on a current active roster, or or both. Or both. Or both. It's a little bit <laughs> of a curveball. You just never know. Sure, you just added that in there, but yeah, or both. I figured he might throw me a, a change up there. All right, so first up, Martinuk. That's definitely a last name. You are correct. <laughs> I know that guy. Ding, 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 Despite the fact that this guy's been in the league for probably like three years. so. But once you play the game, you always know the names. Gotcha. It sounded like it. Peter Forsberg, Joe Sackick, Patrick (laughs) Waugh, Carlo Avalanche, championships all around. (laughs) I wish I got the one at Game Retail. You played a lot of NHL in the uh, mid-early 2000s. Facts. (laughs) All right. uh, Next one, Trocek. That's a city. That is not a city. Oh, who is that? Vincent Trocek. Trocek. A Panther center who's American, by the way. Wow. Where are his parents from? America's a melting pot, folks. Yeah, I don't know. That's I, true. Just, I just looked up where he was from. <laughs> okay. So I didn't, I didn't, fair, do, fair that, enough. <laughs> didn't do that kind of a research, but. Troche. Um, uh, next one Ignal- Ignalina. Is his first name Jerome? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is not Jerome McGinley, <laughs> but touche. It looks like it. Thought, th- thought it was my man Jerome. Uh, I'm uh, gonna have to say I'm I'm praying that's a last name. 
That is not a last name. <laughs> that, 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 that is a city in Lithuania known for the nuclear power plant there. Ooh. Fun fact. <laughs> they must <laughs> Nalina, Lithuania. They must film lots of uh, let's go Netflix movies there. Let's go with De Kaiser. That's a dude. That's a dude? Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> That's a dude. <laughs> Just to be clear, there are no dudes in hockey. Yeah. <laughs> They're just not there. Yeah, I promise yeah. you. Yeah. There's some bros. There's Yeah, bros, for There's sure. There's plenty of bros, <laughs> but dudes. Um, Chisnicki. Ooh, I feel like that could be one of the bolts. That sounds like a, a sports center broadcast last name. <laughs> And the guy didn't want to change it because he, <laughs> he's, like, <laughs> he's like, no, I'm not changing it. I'm unique. Yeah, that's a last name. That is not a last name. That is a <laughs> city in Belarus. God, I haven't seen that. That was founded in 1504. Clearly, the listeners will find out that I need to get more stamps in my passport. <laughs> I'm liking the historical facts. I know, I know. I know. You're, uh, nice. uh, yeah, no problem. It's what I do. Um, that's what they called this man. Fact. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fact. Bresno. A little accent there. Uh, could I get origin, please? <laughs> could you use it in a sentence? <laughs> could I use it in a sentence? That was coming next. <laughs> it's Slovakian. Oh, Slovenia. Hmm. No, no, no. No, no, Slovenia. no. Slovenia. Slovenia. Slovakia. <laughs> Slovakia. <laughs> Those are two different countries. <laughs> That's the last name. That is not a last name. <laughs> These are all countries. That is a city <laughs> in one, Slovakia. <laughs> one for four. <laughs> That averages twenty to thirty <laughs> inches of rainfall per year. Wow. It's this we can of, use that here in Seattle California. Of the, yeah, and this drought. Oh, wow. One more. One yeah, more. We're gonna one do more. one more. Yeah. Okay. Let's go with uh, Yoki Paka. Yeah, that almost sounds Alaskan. Spelled with a J. Oh no, that's not a city. Yeah, you're right. Okay. The, the J helped. Yerky Yoki Paka. Yeah, it looks like JP needs So, JP, how do we do? One, one, for, one for four? Uh, two, two for five. Two for five, yeah. sir. Two for five. All right, well, two yeah. and three, that's not bad. Yeah, not bad. For we'll work on it next week. Let's do, let's do it again. All right, uh, social media is such a big part of sports, and we're going to look at some of the big social media moments of the week. Evan, Brandon, you guys are, it's JP, you guys are well more in tune with social media than I am. <laughs> Derek Fisher. <laughs> Take it away. Oh, God. Derek Fisher, well, I mean, you, you want to talk about that? So, oh, quick backstory of Derek Fisher. He started dating Matt Barnes's ex-wife. Matt Barnes and Derek Fisher were teammates with the Lakers 2011. They were supposedly that homies, though. Supposedly real tight. So basically, Barnes is now with Memphis. They're having their training camp in Santa Barbara, and which he seems find, really weird. Which by is the way. yeah, I thought it was really a weird part of the story. It's like too. when the what? Cowboys come out to Oxnard. Oxnard, yeah. Oh, Oxnard. They're in Sorry, Oxnard. Yeah. yeah, I mean, why why all the way out here? So. They're having their training camp Santa Barbara, and Barnes gets word that Fisher is up at his former baby mama's house uh, up near L.A., or, or down near L.A., if you want to go north, south, up, down, whatever. Uh, and, and Barnes drives 90 minutes to confront him about but it. But 95 miles. That's such a long distance to whoop somebody's ass. Not if you're going 95 <laughs> miles an hour, probably. Like, okay, fair enough. Like, I bet he was. That would uh, take an hour. No, anyway, he's, he apparently got into fisticuffs with Fisher. And there, I saw a thing on Twitter today that said that uh, someone had spoke to a bunch of NBA players, and 100% of them supported Barnes in this situation. As they should. Why? You don't go after somebody's ex-wife, somebody's ex-side piece. Sure, Adrian Broner does it all the time. Somebody's ex-wife, like I put a ring on your finger, I had children with you, multiple. Nah, you don't touch that. You leave that alone. All the way. Uh, every time, 100 out of 100 times. I feel like this needs to be a segment next week. Yeah, just, I'm just JP's dating advice. I kind of want to know I kind of want to know if you've had experience in that field. Yeah. Uh not with a married woman. No. Not no. <laughs> with a, with a, with a baby mama? No. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> There's a lot of disgruntled uh women out there. Gloria being one of them. If you guys do recall, Matt Barnes was rolling around with Rihanna. If you were a woman, you probably would feel some type of way that you got kicked to the curb for a Rihanna who has been around many blocks in her time so i feel like this was her payback and then backfired in her face because now she's gonna get blackballed out of many circles she'll probably lose some endorsements because people won't trust her actions and her being the face of anything and now she just got Derek fisher's eyes blacked he looks like a raccoon 
All right, well, well, we keep the uh, that was fantastic celebrity sports <laughs> relationship <laughs> talk going. That was beautiful. All right, Matt Barnes, from TMZ, totally in the right. Jimmy. We got that right. Uh, more celebrity dating news in the sports world: Serena Williams and Drake. Now, I'd heard about Drake oh, being that's at the your U.S. Girl. Open. Blasphemy. That's your girl. <laughs> and that's all blasphemy. that. That's, and being at a fashion good. event with her or whatnot. Uh, but apparently, this girl, Vicky Duvall, 19-year-old tennis player, tweets out uh, today, oh, my God, uh, Serena and Drake are engaged. Congrats. Uh, what? Apparently, no one's heard anything about that. JP, how upset are you that Serena <laughs> is off the market? On a scale of one to Matt Barnes. Um, on a scale of one to Matt Barnes, I'm probably like Rihanna in the situation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hot. <laughs> There's no way that she can get with somebody. Yes, his music is awesome. He's like a pop star. But when it comes to like real life, everything he gets around just shrivels up and dies. Everybody loses when he comes around. Kentucky, Serena, the <laughs> Raptors. Like Nobody can withstand their win streak. When Drake enters the room, like, he's the omen. He's Rosemary's baby. It's good she's on the back end of her, her career. Uh, the, the, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, what, what, whoa. You, what, what just happened there, Daniel? She, okay. she just... No, I, I know, but she's older. I'm just saying that... If Dan, she, if Dan, she, if Daniel, she... you are referring to the GOAT <laughs> of women's tennis. Maybe, arguably, even female sports in general. She's the most dominant athlete. Like, there's nobody better than Serena. But you just and said she's that a nobody, tennis player. You said that nobody wins with Drake. This so if she lost, true. she'd still be considered. If she she never won another tournament, she'd still be considered well, one of the see, greatest of all time. This is the thing: if she never met Drake, she would have got that triple crown in tennis, and we wouldn't triple even crown. be having this conversation. Grand Slam, Grand, Grand Slam. Slam. I eggs. like I like crowns because women get get crowns. They're queens. Serena's a queen. She could be my queen. <laughs> Cue the slow jam. <laughs> you want, Cue do you want, the, <laughs> the the usher can. You, you have a soliloquy. <laughs> you like to, You got a note to Serena prepared. I would, I would be Serena's tennis ball. <laughs> wow. That that just happened. Yeah, that feels like a Timberlake uh, Saturday Night Live sketch. Yeah, with uh, Sandberg. I'll be your tennis ball. <laughs> I'll be your tennis. Ball. <laughs> we need Jamie Foxx to sing that again. <laughs> oh, anywho, <laughs> what else? Uh, what, else a, you, a, what else you got? Are we moving on? Yeah. A tweet just came through about the Miami Dolphins from one Bradley Evans <laughs> at Yahoo Noise. Just asked, "Can Rick Ross play quarterback?" Well, isn't their owner isn't it, isn't that Jeffrey Ross's their owner's son? <laughs> oh. Adopted. Adopted. <laughs> Rick Ross has been attempting to buy into the Miami Dolphins franchise for almost five years now. Could you imagine what Dolphin games would look like if Rick Ross? They wouldn't was part be so owner? soft. Yeah, well, they wouldn't have Warren Buffett showing up. Yeah. Oh, I like this guy's beard in full uniform. Yeah. Dan, Wait, that's, actually, that's a quality did you looking. not know who Rick Ross is? He did. He's doing Rick Ross, Ross reconnaissance. On. I'm very sheltered, okay? I have no idea. Bill O'Brien, for those Bill who watch yeah. Hard Knocks, Bill O'Brien knows who Rick Ross yeah, is. Yeah, come on, He's Dan. a huge Rick Ross fan. How yeah. many of you guys got kids? Thank you. I have no time to watch uh, any of this stuff. You didn't ask You didn't ask <laughs> that you know of. True. That's true, JP. Vic was raising his hand. Vic's over there. He's like, hey, Vic, you know who Rick Ross is? Yes. All right. Thanks so much for that, buddy. You could have helped me out a little bit. You're the only one in the room who doesn't know who the biggest boss. Wow. I like his beard, though. Do you know? It's a good look. Do you know? Do you know what? <laughs> like it's, it's a good look. Do you know it's what shades. Maybach music is? Let's move on. So, <laughs> so, do you know what a Maybach is? <laughs> ha- have you ever seen a Maybach? All right. Anything else in social? <laughs> in Dan's word, it might be wow. pronounced Maybach. Uh, <clears throat> Bach. There you go. No. No. Uh, no. The dating. The dating Relationship news, top yeah, it all. That, I got, that was that was really solid. I had some other stuff lined up, but that was too good. So we'll yeah, all right, Brandon, we got one liners for our games this weekend. Oh yeah, Devin, take it away. All right, college games for this weekend. We'll get some NFLs in there as well. I'm going to give you a matchup, Brandon. You give me one line okay. to preview the game: Cal versus Utah. Jared Goff's reality check. So you like the Utes? I do like the Utes. Okay, at Rice Eccles, Michigan Northwestern. Jim Harbaugh will need a new pair of khakis. Harbaugh pants. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say Pat likes pleats. Oh, I, I just I I well yeah no I like that too yeah um I'm a big fan I I think North, You're North Western. You're a big fan of pleats. No, I am a big fan of pleats. I I think North Northwestern wins this one. I know it's in the big house, but um I think they're just they're too physical running the football. I know Michigan's stout against the run, but I think they'll 
Don't run on them. That was a that was a big run on sentence. That run on more than one line. Run it's on. the pleat. It's an optical illusion. <laughs> 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 All right, NFL Seahawks Bengals. Andy Dalton laughs at Lob. Oh, <clears throat> I like the Bengals. All right. I think all those weapons. I think on uh, uh, real quick pr- pr- prediction here. Uh, <laughs> p- p- <laughs> That's t- what we're doing t- here t- 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 today, Junior. Uh, Gio Bernard, hundred yards receiving. Ooh. Right yeah. down. I, I think they're going to be focused on Eifert and and Green and all those guys. A lot of little checkdowns. I think he makes a couple of those linebackers miss and breaks off a couple. Bengals only three point favorites at home, which shocked me. That's basically home field advantage. Yeah. Like it's a two and two Seahawks yeah. game. Do you uh, think AJ Green is going to beat up on uh, your boy Sherman? I think they're just going to dance all day. I think AJ will get a few, but I think they're just going to be locked up. I locked think they in. need a side cam. It, just do the pitcher and pitcher in the corner yeah. with that matchup and just watch them dance. Dan- dancing like, with the stars. Will they do the salsa? Yeah. You know, a bring, the, bring the bring the judges in from Dancing with the Stars. Get a sea walk. We oh. got to go back to social to talk about Victor Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> can, can, can we finish uh, this up and then we can go back to Victor Cruz? <laughs> 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 uh, one look, more. One more game. <laughs> Lions, Cardinals. Dan Orlovsky sighting? Wow. Question mark? <laughs> <laughs> St- Stafford speak- not good against the Cardinals in his career. That's a hot take. Wow. That is a hot take. Wow. Spe- speaking of bad end zone I'm moments. I'm spitting fire emojis over here. with Tom about earlier. <laughs> wow, not a Matthew Stafford fan. What's wrong with Fat Stafford? <laughs> <laughs> Stafford. I just want to see Orlovsky run out of the back of the end zone again. <laughs> Can you imagine? Don't his- we all? Don't we all? Yeah. Can you that imagine? was a very sad moment for quarterbacks around the world. One more social moment here. Okay. JP, what, Victor what's, Cruz. what's the Victor Cruz? You're so excited about that. Oh, man. I feel so bad for Victor Cruz because he must leave the worst paper trails on the planet. So this week, Victor Cruz's fiance, I'll call her wife, it's in limbo now, uh, texted Victor's side pieces and wanted to acquaint them in a group message. And berate them, and then end it with the kissy face emoji. Uh, rest in peace to Victor Cruz because he's been getting lambasted and roasted in memes on the internet. I'm 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 a, I, I'm very pragmatic. I'm confused as to why Victor Cruz would do such a thing in the vicinity of New York, being as that you play for the New York Giants. Yeah, it's in East Rutherford, New Jersey, for the stadium. But like you're in New York, like New York's not that big. Like everybody knows who like the real life groupies are, like why why how why would they have your direct contact? Like why would you not have like a liaison? Why would you not pass the phone to a homeboy to do your dirt so it doesn't go to your personal phone? So what you're saying <laughs> is he he, he didn't have a fall guy. He okay, in the in the words of Chris Carter, he did yeah. not. He uh, he needs to go back and see who his real friends are, because a real friend would have nipped that in the bud and said, no sir, not on the personal line. That's not how this gets. That's not how this works. Any Victor Cruz owners? Obviously not. No, no. I drafted him in yeah. one or two leagues and dropped him after like week two or three. But this entire situation makes sense about why his calf hurts so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's because he's running from us. Okay. Wow. He's been doing lots of work off the field. Uh, Super. All right, we're running out of time, so let's get uh, – We're first and foremost, we're all sports fans here. We also do work in sports and enjoy talking sports. But as fans, we all have teams, and uh, it's time to make our predictions for the weekend. So let's get our fan final score prediction, starting with the ASU boys. That's Brandon and Evan. Brandon, ASU minus 15 against Colorado. Final scores, Brandon. 37-21 ASU, they cover. I will go 31-17, Colorado sneaks in. We, really? should, we should almost bet that. Let's see who actually takes away a buck or something. Let's see what Sean King says. I was going to say, we should ask Sean King about that and then oh, do, yeah. do the reverse of whatever he says. Because that would that definitely give you the money. Uh, USC already played uh, Washington by the time this goes live. So, JP, you're out on. You're lucky on that one. You think they cover the 17 probably, yeah? Uh, yeah. By halftime. Yeah. San Jose State UNLV, the only San Jose State – or well, JP went to San Jose State but doesn't care to bet. I'm going to say – I'm not going to say UNLV wins this game, thirty-one to twenty-seven. Really, this guy, this cat has to be the hey, worst. If fan. I'm not, That's the reverse jinx it's right a reverse. There. If I'm not a pessimist, uh, I'm never surprised or pleasantly surprised. Listeners so. at home, when you do hear this, don't believe these fun, lies. He's fun not a stat pessimist. I looked up for the, for that game. Uh, um, UNLV, one hundred and three points in the last two weeks. <laughs> 
And San Jose Granted, State, 80 of those came against play? Idaho State two weeks ago. Yeah, but. That's right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, Irvin will, will get will get his, but other than that, I think it's going to be. You mean the guy that doesn't have his name on the back of the jersey? <laughs> that was great. Did you, did that you was so funny. Did you see that last week? Doesn't awesome. have the name like, on the back does, of his jersey. You go, you're on national television with the captain C. Yeah, he's got the captain C. They, and his, they took time to do that, but didn't put his name <laughs> on the back of his the jersey. Back. All right, NFL 49ers Giants. This is uh, Sunday night. Sunday night. Sunday night football. 49er fans in the house. We've got Evan. You're up first, but I like the Niners too. In that game, you do. Yeah. Really? Yeah. On the road? Prime time? You're going to force uh, Eli to be Eli and throw some of those picks. I'm I'm going 24-6, Giants. I don't even think the Niners score a point. Wait, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be like I think it'd be like 14. Can you quantify nah, 13, the 6? Is that a touchdown and then sands the extra point cuz they missed it or is that two field goals? <laughs> it, it, it is 32 yards. It's a <laughs> it tough is, kick. I know. I'm going to say three Blaine Gabbert safeties. Oh! oh wait, wait. That would be six <laughs> points for the Giants then. Yeah, oh. that's true. <laughs> right. Uh, they said there'd be no that's math. That's that Arizona State <laughs> math right there. <laughs> oh, wow. Eli will tap the ball out of the back of the end zone three times. Will he punch it like, uh, what's his face for the Seahawks? Right? Eli's kind of, <laughs> Eli's a little slower, so he probably will. He might kick it or something. Can I? <laughs> all right, Redskins, Falcons, Falcons favored by seven and a half. JP, this is all you. Uh, we're gonna win this one. Yeah, really. It's one of those, another one of those Redskins just cause games. <laughs> like, oh, we'll go out and play this week, and right. then next week lose by thirty-five. All right, what's your prediction? Final score. Uh, Kirk will still throw like two picks, but we'll win like twenty-nine, twenty-two. Some missed extra points. Yeah, we got, we got some two those point 30, conversion. Those oh, no, 32 yeah, yard yeah, kicks yeah, are there, tough, there's, man. There's, there's going to be no kickers involved in this one. This is just going to be straight going for two. <laughs> straight Madden? It's going to look straight. just like a Madden game. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, like keep right. the offense on the field. You know, Matt Ryan will be foolish enough not to throw it to Julio. And Roddy White will have it bounce off his face mask. Somebody get lucky and pick it off, run it back. It's, it's one of those games. <laughs> and Brandon's our resident Vikings fan, fortunately. We can't lose. Can't lose this week. Good prediction. Although I like it. Although it is uh, two days ago, well, October 6th, so I won't be too specific, but October 6th was the 10-year anniversary of the Love Boat. So they could still lose nice. this weekend. They, could, they, <laughs> they might could find a way. It. Maybe the Love <laughs> Kayak. <laughs> There's a lot of lakes in Minnesota. <laughs> they could make it happen. Then they go purify themselves in the waters. <laughs> of Lake, of Lake, Lake Minnetonka. Minnetonka. <laughs> I thought Man. Brokaw was coming back. Sorry. I thought Brokaw was coming <laughs> back, too. All right, let's wrap it up uh, for this uh, edition of the Bullpen. Guys, any final thoughts on uh, all that today? I just want to win my fantasy matchup this week. We all want you to win your fantasy yeah, matchup. I'm tired of hearing about it. Yeah. <laughs> You're as bad as I am. You don't quit every week, but you scream, I hate fantasy football at least once a week. I do, man, because my players only play when they feel like playing. I could never be a GM in real life. I feel like people would be on my hot seat every seven minutes. <laughs> Like, I pay you to catch the ball. So if you drop the ball consecutively, like, you need to get your paycheck docked. I like that. Yeah. H- how come nobody ever docks Shaq in basketball? Shaq, if you make f- $50 million a, a year. I'm a huge fan of, of, of the fact that athletes should be paid based on their performance. Yeah, on so a Shaq, basis. every free throw you miss, I'm taking $300. Because it amazes every free me, throw like, you miss. baseball pro- players and their salaries that they make. And they go Guaranteed. There and, yeah, and they just... And some you of them know, make that money hurt. Joe Maurer. I mean, some of them don't play all year. Yeah, you know? I mean, I, exactly. you can't blame a guy for getting hurt. But anyway, that, that's a topic for another we day, digress. I'm sure. If you're active with bad hands or you're running the wrong routes all the time, like a Ruben Randall, like, nah, man, give me that back. I need that. <laughs> I could repurpose that somewhere else, okay, and flip that into something great. Not you. You know anything else? No, you guys covered it. <laughs> All right, first one in the books. We, we covered I think, it. <laughs> I, think we, uh, I think we at least succeeded in our goal. Uh, Maybe uh, uh, next time we'll have Pat Forty call in. We'll talk college football. Yeah. <laughs> Take the, the calls. We'll, we'll, call, we'll have to segment. rip up uh, his The problem board. with this is you won't be able to see his hair. Feel it's very free important to disagree. Could we can we describe it for people who haven't seen him. There's probably or a lot we can of, just tell them to like go online and search him. There's probably a lot of millennials uh, <laughs> listening to this or will be listening to this. So we need to call Forty. Okay, but then call Barons on three way, but put him on mute so Forty can talk that nonsense about Iowa, and then we oh, unmute Barons, and then it just it's gets gonna be re- World War Three. Just gets yeah. real lit on the podcast. Yeah, well, I'll tune in next week. We'll see if uh, if Andy Barons gets his way this weekend when he wins again. Love, peace, and Afro Grease. <laughs> <laughs>